So let's talk about what exactly is Motion Solve. So Motion Solve is a multi-body simulation solver. Pretty much, it's simulating the mechanical motion uh, of systems, uh, and these could, these motions can be caused by forces or uh, restraints or couplings. You kind of see this this bulldozer right here that's moving around. This would be a classic example of something you'd solve in uh, Motion Solve. One one of the key things that you're really doing is you're trying to determine um, what's happening. Um, with the required motion. So if you're trying to actually you know, design the hydraulics and you know, how much force is gonna lift the system, you can use Motion Solve to do that. Com another common application is maybe you're building out motors um, and you need to see how much torque will kind of be generated and it, will it actually kind of move my vehicle or, or move my device. Um, lastly, you know, uh, it, this, the solver itself, Motion Solve is the Altair specific multi-body solver. It's integrated in interfaces across Inspire Motion and also Hyperworks. What I'll be showing today is just within Hyperworks. If you do have questions on Inspire Motion, I can kind of answer them at the end. You know, the kind of the key thing is in, with the Motion Solve solver within, within Inspire Motion is kind of a reduced uh, version of the full Motion Solve solver uh, enabled in Hyperworks. So specifically, you know what? You know one of the cool things about uh, multi-body simulation. If you're not familiar with it, I'm guessing a lot of you probably are familiar with FEA. They're they're kind of in the same family. All both of them are based on the mechanics of of, of mecha uh, principles of mechanics, the equation of motion. The key difference is multi-body simulation focus on on the macroscopic behavior of the system. You kind of see on the left uh, a large car. Um, you're simulating what's happening as it's kind of moving in between those lanes. You're not necessarily focused on the really you know, when I say microscopic, the internal parts, how they're, you know, causing um, stresses and displacements, whereas FEA is more concerned about the microscopic behavior of a system, how something is internally deflecting. With that being said, Motion Solve can handle flexible bodies. We can do some, uh, you know, internal deflection, but it's generally looking at large time events that are dynamic, um, and you're looking at a large system. Um, with that being said, multi-body simulation tends to be very efficient for larger systems. You're not solving as many equations. So it's a really good understanding of what's happening to something dynamically. Uh, bear in mind, in FEA, you can do some dynamic analysis. You know, you might be thinking of explicit or crash testing, but those analyses, they typically are microseconds or milliseconds. Um, you can't capture things for a long event of time. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge model. So there's, there's reasons why you might use one or the other. So specifically, if you've never used kinematic simulation, I'm sure probably you know, some of you might be familiar with this equation. We know <clears throat> through mechanics, everything has a capability. If you're sitting at your desk right now, you can touch an object, you can move it translationally you know, in the X, Y, Z directions in those three axes, or you can rotate something, which would be across the X, Y, and Z. In motion solve terms or multi-body terms, that's known as the degree of freedom. Actually, in FEA terms, we kind of refer to nodes as well of degrees of freedom. So how we govern how motion solve works is we restrict motion via either you know, a specific force or motor, or we restrict uh, uh, via joints. The joints are very similar to how if, you, if, you're, if you've worked in CAD systems before, how CAD mates work. They restrain what's happening in the system. So we see on this, this image on the screen right here, um, here's a classic example of motion solve. We're restraining the motion um, in the y direction. Obviously, it's a really simple example right here, but it cannot rotate. Um, it can only move actually, so it only has one degree of freedom. So we could actually simulate this in motion solve, and you now we could look at the frictional forces. You know, how much force is it going to be able to push that piece of wood through that that channel? So there's a lot of kind of applications there. So what I figured since we're talking about joints, one of the other things to kind of keep in mind is that joints are going to be what's restraining the system. So that's an equilibrium. So this equation right here is known as Grubler's equation. Um, generally, you, you want to make sure you're in, in, in equilibrium. You're not removing more degrees of freedom in your system than you currently have. And these are the types of joints you have. So you see joints are how two parts interact with one another in motion solve. 
And you'll see that as we kind of go through it and through our example, it's how we kind of restrict motion either translationally or rotationally. One of the really cool things about motion solve though, is it has compliant joints. Compliant joints really are, you think about them as bushings. Bushings allow some relative motion um, in six degrees of freedom. So if you have something that maybe is over constrained or under constrained, you can use a compliant joint and that's actually gonna allow the system to solve. Some other motion tools out there, you have to spend a lot of time making sure all your joints are set up properly. Motion solve kind of alleviates that by using compliant joints. All right, so let's jump into an example. Um, so I'm gonna minimize my screen here and let's jump into uh, motion solve. So one of the cool things about motion solve, it's directly integrated into HyperWorks. Um, if you've never seen HyperWorks before, it's the, the lar our large platform for structural, uh, in this case, kinematics or motion, but also CFD. And it also has to pre in the post. Um, so you can do meshing here. You can also look at individual results. But in this case, we're, we're actually running a kinematic analysis. So first thing, uh, we can import our CAD model. Um, so there's a, a variety of things we can bring in. And so in this case, everything we'd want. Um, you can characterize motion for a simple part, but more often than not, when I see users utilizing uh, motion solve, it's for assemblies. So in this case, we actually have um, an actual pulley right here and the gear, and we're not gonna we're gonna specify a motion based around the rotation of this small pink gear right here, the pinion gear. And you'll see in my system right here how everything is set up in motion solve is based around. Um, the specific uh, uh, rigid body dynamic uh, boundary conditions right here. So we specify our joints, our motions, our forces, or even you know if springs or bushings, we can apply them. In this case, we actually have a motor that's being applied. And the motor you see right here is this pinion right here. And you'll see that I'm actually specifying about a 75 degree, so this is in radian, 75 degree uh, rotation here. So it's, it's gonna move a little bit and we'll actually, we'll run two different cases where we're adjusting it, where we go from 1.3 to you know maybe increase it a little bit more. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind. One of the cool things about this tree is it kind of sorts everything where you're at. Um, there's a lot of power behind this tool. I mean, I can generate lots of custom outputs, you know, in, in terms of how I'm setting up my model. There's so many different types of requests uh, that you have at your disposal and if you're doing you know, any type of motor design, or you're really trying to size things out, you know, building cams, this is invaluable because everywhere in the system, I can look at what's happening to um, the individual component. Um, you'll also see there's motion contact right here. So you see these two parts are highlighted. You'll see that I can specify um, uh, within this, this, this specific value, um, what its uh, contact properties are. So, you know, in reality, you're, you're sitting at your desk right now, you move apart, there's probably some frictional coefficient being applied. Uh, if you have two parts, you know, if you drop your phone or something on the desk, there's some type of impact stiffness. We can key all these values in accordingly. Uh, so in this case, I, I don't have friction force applied, uh, but I do have some impact uh, comp uh, stiffness values applied uh, for each of these motion contacts. Uh, note by default, um, based on kind of default uh, mechanical properties, uh, motion solve can kind of uh, uh, calculate these automatically for you, but you can also adjust these. Okay, great. So let's actually solve this system. We'll solve it in real time. So what you'll see um, is you're gonna see the actual dynamic motion as it starts to solve. Um, it's writing to my directory and it's gonna do this reasonably quick, you know, in about a minute or two in terms of what I've timed out. Um, but it, it's it's a great way of kind of going through and calculating um, what's happening to the system. One of the other things to kind of keep in mind when we're looking at uh, these types of results, you kind of see right there, it showed the animation and finished out, like I said, a couple of minutes. So if you were trying to do this in, in FEA, you know, you'd have to run, you know, you could try and solve this in implicit FEA, that would be super difficult with all the contacts. 
maybe explicit might be able to handle it. But again, it's going to be something that takes way longer and because there's more equations to solve. So I think that's really where the power of, the, of using a kinematic based solver is. And note, you can apply some tools that aren't rigid. You can actually apply what are known as flexible bodies. So there is some deformation allowed. So it's a good way if you've never utilized this approach, if you're dealing with a large system that has dynamic loading to kind of approach this. Um, so we saw the animation right here. Um, <clears throat> you can actually animate it more and adjust frame rates in Hyperview and save out animations. But what's also, you know, what's kind of, you know, the other kind of key thing what, what users are utilizing motion solve for is specifically obtaining results, whether it's displacement, velocities, accelerations, or torques, what's actually good to plot. So plot is actually going to load a new screen on here. Um, it's actually one of our post processors. It's called Hypergraph. It gives you the capability to kind of post process um, our results. So if I hit open here and I go to this motion model I just ran, uh, ABF is the Hypergraph file. So if I hit open there, you'll see um, all the different values I have at my disposal. And these are all those kind of requests I built. Um, you, you can also kind of create custom mathematical impress, expressions. So like I said, like uh, there's a lot of power under the hood here. If I go to, uh, let's go to one of these joints. And remember the joints are how the two parts interact. So joint 14 was that, that joint I just pointed out to you earlier. If we go there and look at the displacement and then hit plot, you'll see what's happening to the displacement. And, and that makes sense because you'll kind of see as we watch the animation, the pulley goes in and out. So it's a good kind of representation of what's happening to the system. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one of the other cool things about this is that you'll see this puts, gets put on another page. I can go back to my first page where the motion solve study is um, and I can iterate. And that's kind of the other power of this. If you're kind of do, trying to do this in, on the shop, you're gonna spend a lot of time. And I can go real easily right here and maybe just adjust how much this, this motor is gonna rotate at. So if I go to, 1.5 uh, radians. Um, and then if I resolve this, another kind of key thing to keep in mind, I didn't show the analysis settings, but you can specify the analysis settings here, uh, what your end time is going to be. Um, so you can actually kind of control the dynamics as well uh, within the system. All right, so let's animate this now. Or I'm sorry, let's solve this. So I'm solving for the new system. And again, it's probably going to take about a minute or two, but again, um, it's, it's much more reduced in the system. And the other really cool thing about the solver is it has capabilities of leveraging um, more cores. You know, some other uh, kinematic solvers are not set up to take advantage of multiple cores. Um, Motion Solve is, 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 is uh, able to do that. You know, if you have enough units within your system, you can solve more cores. So again, that's why we have a lot of automotive customers utilizing this because they can look at you know, kind of large full systems. All right, so it just finished. You saw the animation. It rotated just slightly more. It's not significant, um, but I just wanted to kind of show you how you can kind of iterate and, and, and work through this. All right, so if I come here, I can bring up the newest ABF file. I see 145, so just what I just ran. And if I can come back here, uh, to uh, joint 14 and hit plot, you'll see that we have our new displacement values. It's a little bit kind of steeper, but it's kind of still following that same profile because again, it, I really didn't adjust the rotation that, that much. I didn't change the speed. I just specified it's going to rotate a couple more extra degrees. Yeah, 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 yeah.